As lawmakers in Washington debate a new possible COVID-19 relief package, we take a look at the state of the economy here in Western New England. During the summer months, many businesses with capacity restrictions benefited from having access to the outdoors. But with the change of seasons, bringing frigid temperatures and snow, those options are now limited or non-existent. I spoke with Rick Sullivan, president of the Economic Development Council of Western Massachusetts, to find out how local businesses are faring during the winter. Some of our businesses have done, you know, actually fairly well during this, this period of time. Um, so we, we are starting to see, um, you know, significant um, demand, you know, if you're in the manufacturing se uh, sectors, um, you know, those are doing, you know, quite well. Some of them have pivoted kind of the term of the day, if you will, um, to uh, maybe go into some other um, production lines um, if they can get longer term contracts for things like PP PPE. But if you are in the restaurant industry or anything that is a venue travel tourism related, you know, you are still struggling and are going to continue to struggle to some degree until we really are out of the COVID restrictions and the gathering restrictions. And obviously restaurants, while they might have got a bit of a reprieve during the summer and early fall, um, you know, Massachusetts does not really lend itself to uh, outdoor dining experiences. As you just mentioned, the restaurant industry has been hardest hit by all of um, what's happening with COVID, and it's garnered a lot of much-deserved attention. But what businesses are also struggling that we haven't really been hearing about, but also need some attention and light shined on them? Anything that is consumer-related that is, is kind of impulse buying to some degree or relies on any kind of foot traffic. Because, you know, if you're in Springfield or, you know, any, any of the communities, um, you know, people are working from home, so, you know, they're not out in those usual areas. And so the foot traffic is down significantly in any of those kind of, you know, smaller um, consumer areas, kind of the businesses that we think of as Main Street businesses. It was announced in early January that the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, would reopen for new borrowers. What should businesses be aware of with this latest round, and what other resources are available? They certainly, first and foremost, need to be working with their financial advisors and, and uh, in most cases, their local banks that they do business with and decide, you know, if, if applying for and getting a PPP makes sense for them. But it's a good thing that the PPP program has reopened. The state does have some other grant programs that are out there that are COVID relief. I think the, the cities um, that are entitlement communities have leveraged their community development block grants, which is a federal program. Um, and made it available to mostly Main Street type businesses. Um, you know, again, the mom and pops um, to come in with some grants to be able to um, help them, you know, weather this storm and provide some uh, much needed cash flow to be able to uh, keep, keep people employed and to pay the bills. Um, and there's now a um, grant program out there with um, for cities, uh, which does involve uh, working with uh, regional economic development organizations um, to kind of get together to put together um, employment um, programs or, or other programs that are going to be able to get people, you know, back to work, get the businesses back open and, you know, hopefully um, allow us to, to really, um, you know, come out of the, the COVID restrictions um, with an economy that's uh, vibrant. With the start of the new year, the topic of vaccinations has been at the forefront of many conversations surrounding the pandemic and COVID-19. Some people are on board, some people want to decline the vaccination. Is the future of our economy dependent on vaccinations and the amount of people who receive it? I do think that it is. Um, you know, I don't think people are going to feel safe until obviously the numbers are down significantly. I do think that there's a direct correlation between um, the availability and the deployment of the vaccine. I do think that there has been significant frustration um, in terms of the rollout uh, and the availability of the vaccine um, and when people are going to be able to get it. And it has taken longer um, than people have thought it should take. It's up to government to uh, get it out and get it dispersed and get it into uh, people's arms, as they say. But I do think that there's a direct correlation between that and people feeling safe and us being able to turn the corner to a more vibrant economy. Back in the summer when we last spoke with you, you were feeling optimistic about the long-term prognosis of our local economy. Now, almost six months later, are you still feeling optimistic about the future of our economy here in Western Mass? I am. I, I can tell you, I think if you look at the real estate market in terms of residentially, 
Um, you know, it is still, you know, it is still a seller's market. You know, we certainly need some additional inventory. Those individuals that are either going to be working remotely or from home, or even some of the hybrids, they're going to have a choice as to where they they choose to live. And so as long as we have the infrastructure in terms of the communication and the Wi-Fi and the broadband, Western Mass is a, has a compelling case to make uh, for individuals that may need to have access into Boston or New York, but they can live and experience a lower cost of living and a, a great quality of life here in Western Massachusetts. I also think that as companies um, you know, have gone through the pandemic and they've looked at their supply chains, particularly some of their foreign suppliers, they see that supply chain as being um, unreliable or at least not as reliable as they want. And, you know, we have ex some extremely talented uh, businesses out here in Western Mass, particularly when you're talking precision manufacturing. Um, and there's an ability for these companies to be able to enter some supply chains of companies that they currently are not in. Um, and I can tell you just anecdotally, uh, one of the services that the EDC does provide is site selection um, searches. And you know our numbers are 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 up, um, and the number of um, I'll say active potential active deals that we have um, is is higher now than it would have been even two years ago. So I do I am optimistic. I do think we've got a lot of opportunities, and I think um, in some respects uh, Western Massachusetts um, best days are may very well be in front of us um, as we come out of uh, COVID.